Hello, in this video I will walk you through the ERC evaluation process. You might think that this is not very relevant, but it actually indirectly impacts on how you write your proposal. My name is Ino Agrafiotti and I work as a scientific officer at the Executive Agency of the European Research Council. I'm the coordinator of the panel that covers disciplines such as molecular biology, biochemistry, structural biology and molecular biophysics. Imagine that you are ready to apply for an ERC grant. You've worked on your proposal for weeks. You've gathered all your necessary documents and now you're about to hit the submit button. But what happens next? What's going on behind the scenes while you're waiting for a decision? Let's go through the seven phases of the ERC evaluation process. The panel members are the most important part of the evaluation process. They are top specialists in their field and they are able to work as generalists. Do not forget that the ERC panels are very interdisciplinary. It is thanks to these people that the ERC is able to evaluate the thousands of proposals that it receives every year. Panels work on alternate years and most panel members are reinvited from the previous time. But around 25% of panel members are renewed at its call. It is the Scientific Council, the governing body of the ERC, that selects and invites the new people. Recruitment for both old and new panel members starts a year and a half before the submission deadline. This is in order to ensure that everybody will block the panel meeting dates in their calendars. Full participation in panel meetings is obligatory. A couple of months before the deadline, us, the scientific officers, we ask the panel members for more details on their expertise. We also want to address the potentially large conflicts of interest that might completely exclude the evaluators from the call. This could be because they have been involved in the preparation of a proposal or if they have submitted a proposal themselves. The deadline has passed, the submissions are in, we are very excited to start the process. First, we send again an email to the panel members to ask them about conflicts of interest. This time, the type of conflict of interest excludes them from reviewing a proposal and from being present in the room when the proposal is discussed. This could be because they are from the same host institution, because they collaborated in the past, maybe they are rivals or they had a mentorship relationship. In addition, applicants are able to nominate up to three excluded reviewers. If a panel member is in this list, then we make sure that they also leave the room. Taking all this information into account, with our help, the panel chairs carry out remotely a preliminary allocation of proposals to panel members. This is done using information in part A of your proposal, which means your abstract, the descriptors and the free keywords you have given us. At this point, we do not often have access to your part B1. The panel chairs usually assign four panel members to each proposal. Basically, we know what you asked for, we know what expertise we have at hand, and we try to match to the best of our abilities proposals to panel members. If applicants have put a secondary panel, in other words, they have asked for a cross-panel review, the panel chair assesses if this is really necessary. If the proposal is too far out of the expertise of the panel, the panel chair is allowed to ask for a panel transfer. This takes place after a very careful discussion between two panel chairs in order to ensure that such a panel transfer is as fair as possible. As the name suggests, only panel chairs take part in this meeting, which happens very early on, about 10 working days after the deadline. It is an opportunity for the panel chairs to meet with the ERC president. The president gives a general overview of all the issues that could arise during the evaluation and highlights all the issues that are close to the heart of the Scientific Council members, scientific integrity, open access, unconscious bias. The panel chairs can ask questions, they can discuss amongst each other. This is all before they separate to discuss with their panel's scientific officers the details of the step one meeting, the duration, agenda, and also to finalize the allocation of proposals to the panel members. We try to organize this initial meeting as soon as possible in order to maximize the time that panel members have to review the proposals. And they need this time because they will receive 20 to 45 proposals, depending on the panel. In 
the first remote phase, panel members read at home only part B1 of the proposal, which includes the project synopsis, your CV and your track record. They are asked to focus on feasibility. You can find out more about how to write part B1 in one of our other videos. Just go and check them out. You have to make sure you charm them at this step. As I said before, panel members have a lot of work. They have to read between 20 and 45 proposals, so it will help if you make their life as easy as possible. You can have a look, for example, at the information for applicants. There you can find the list of questions that they have to answer when they assess your proposal. In this way, it will be clear to you what information you should make easily accessible to them. During the remote phase, panel members must write a review for each proposal and mark the project and the applicant on a scale of 1 to 5 each. The applicants do not see these scores, but the other panel members do, together with the text of the reviews, of course. These scores are also used by us in order to compile a ranking list that is given to the panel members at the start of the Step 1 meeting. This is when the panel members meet for the first time. Some people are more positive with their scores, some are more negative. The expertise of one evaluator may be closer to the proposal than that of another evaluator. This is why the panel has to discuss every proposal as one. Through passionate and very detailed discussions, I have to say I'm always very amazed at how prepared most panel members are before the panel meeting, the panel calibrates itself and finally decides which people they want to see for an interview. Those proposals that score an A will automatically pass to step two. Those that score a B or a C, they are rejected. They will receive the decision of the panel in the form of a panel comment, as well as all the reviews without the scores. These people have one month to redress, but I would like to emphasize here that scientific disagreement with the text of the reviews is not a reason for redress. You should redress only if you notice that we have made a procedural mistake. In terms of how many proposals move on to the next process, there is one administrative restriction, what we call maximum three times the budget. Basically, proposals whose collective budget is three times the budget that the panel will eventually allocate can make it to step two. This is a restriction that was set up by the Scientific Council in order to equalize the chances across all panels for those who come for an interview. For those lucky proposals that move on to step two, the panel strongly depends on precise feedback from the real experts in the field. This is why panel members spend at least two hours at the end of a very tiring step one meeting agreeing on the names of remote reviewers who will be sent the proposals to read at home. Around 12 people per proposal are suggested and we aim to have at least three remote reviewers per proposal, allowing for disagreements. I don't know why, but for some proposals it is relatively easy to find reviewers, for others it is more problematic. However, statistics have shown that the number of remote reviewers does not influence your success rate. It is also not correlated with the quality of your proposal. What is important for you to know is that when reviewers are invited and they decide if they are the right people for the job, based solely on your abstract, they do not see your name. So it is very important that your abstract is clear and well written. By doing so, we can get more appropriate reviewers for your proposal. So our message to you is help us help you. In the second remote phase, which takes place between the step one and step two panel meeting, panel members and remote reviewers alike receive both parts of the proposal, part B1 and part B2. In this remote phase, they look at methodology. This is the fun part according to all panel members, since they get to meet the applicants and actually discuss science with them. The ERC interview organization is a well-oiled machine. I invite you to check out the video that we have made about the interview process. After each applicant's interview, the panel has to decide whether the proposal will get an A or a B. An A means that the proposal should be funded if unlimited budget were available. B means that even if we had unlimited budget, these proposals should not be funded. Unfortunately, only the top A's get to be funded. Once the ranking list is finalized, panel members summarize again the decision in the form of a panel comment, whether the proposal has been funded or not. 
Something that many people do not know is that by this point, its proposal has been discussed by the whole panel for around an hour and a half, in addition to all the time spent remotely by both panel members and remote reviewers. So if your proposal does not get funded, please take this feedback into account because it will really help you in the future. At the end of the step two meeting, we sadly say goodbye to those panel members that have worked with us for four times. To the others, we say, see you again in two years. And then for us, the cycle begins again. In this video, I gave you a behind the scenes look of an ERC evaluation. I have gone through the seven phases of the process. I'm sure this information will help you structure your application with the people who are reading it in mind. I also tried to show you how much effort we put into taking care of your proposal, from choosing the correct panel members to review it, to making sure that all the conflicts of interest are respected, to finding the best remote reviewers, to making sure your interview is as stress-free as possible for you. For more information on how to write your application, check out our other videos. From my side, I want to wish you the best of luck.